So what I was trying to get you to do in this question was to take an historical approach to understanding development today, right? And who's, who's studied, is anybody, who's in Latin American studies? Anybody? Nobody. There we go. Um, you study any of the history of the Civil Wars in Latin America? A little bit. Who are, they f who are they fought by time and time and time again? The liberals and the conservatives, right? Over and over again. Now, they're not fighting about, f um, you know, free choice and abortion and, and uh, gay marriage, right? I mean, in the United States today, we think of liberal, and it has, com is a, it has a, a connotation completely divorced from its historical roots. And you go to Europe, and you say liberal, and it, you know, you, no one knows what the hell you're talking about. And, oh, I'm liberal because you know, I'm pro-choice. Um, huh? So the wars in South America fought over and over and over again, and to this day are still being fought in different ways. They were, you know, these bloody wars were between large, large landowners, which were, you know, left over from the colonial period, where you had, you know, huge haciendas or estancias and whatnot, who, um, and who were very interested in, who made their wealth in a certain way, by owning lots of land, right? And by controlling the production and the labor, the resources on that land. And they really um, didn't have much of an incentive to, uh, to intensify production because they had so much of it. So, you know, why would you need to intensify? All you have to do is plant a little more, be a little more extensive, right? Exploit a few more indigenous people. And you get you get your crops. And, you know, you have to send some of it to the viceroy, right? And the viceroy has to send it to the crown, right? Um, but that's basically, you know, how colonialism works. And then when independence came along, you have these criollos who have these huge estancias. And, you know, are they interested in technology? Well, not particularly. You know, why should they be? Um, are they interested in a banking sector or in, a, um, in a, uh, a monetary system which allows them to trade across states and across the stance? Well, not really. I mean, they're quite happy within their own particular state. Are they interested in railroads that go across the continent? Um, well, no, not really. I mean, everybody kind of produces the same stuff. And so, you know, why would I trade with you? You just give me what I make, right? Um, oh, I've got to say this joke. The, so I'm in Spain, and we're at this uh, uh, conference, and it's on free trade and food sovereignty, and it's really very interesting. And some, this, this old um, Catalan anarchist gets up, and he's just railing on and on about how stupid it is that uh, how, with this, uh, under this neoliberal regime, with all this trading going on, you know? They said, you know, yeah, we're over here, and, you know, we've got our butter, and we send it over to them, and then they send our butter back to us, you know, and then we've got our bread over here, and we send it over there, and they send the bread. Why don't we just trade recipes? <laughs> <laughs> um, so why don't we just trade recipes? Why not just trade recipes? Why not? That's right. So, as agriculture gets industrial, as, well, as, as industry right, develops, heavy industry and manufacturing develops, these goods have to move. Why do they have to move? Why can't you just make these goods and you know, sell them in your county or sell them in your country and be happy? <coughs> yes? Yes, and? You can't sell food for as much as you profit. Very good, and? There are people in the middle who want to like, charge, I guess, like, add on their, like, try to mark up the price for them just moving in. So okay. You want to continue to increase your profitability, you have to find new markets. Right. You were going to say something as well? 
That's right. You can only consume so much, right? And then also, if you happen to be exploiting these people for their, for their labor, you're not going to be able you know, pay them enough to buy the product, because then you wouldn't make any money. So you have to be able to sell the product somewhere else where they can pay the price that you want, right? So you've got to expand. So if you've got to expand, you know, and you run up against <coughs> this country which is made up of huge haciendas and estancias, and they have huge tariffs protecting their products, right? What are you going to do? You have a war. People think wars are fought over access to resources. That's really a s very small part of the reason why wars are fought. Wars are fought over expanding markets. Modern wars fought over expanding markets. So you've got to bust down the doors and make people consume your products. So that's what the wars between the liberals and the conservatives were about. And you know, the conservatives were about conserving. You know, they wanted to keep things. And of course, this has got all bound up in ideology, doesn't it? In the Catholic Church, and you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the positivists, and this and that. And pretty soon you have different theories surfacing, right, which are situated within these ideologies, which defend very different economic interests and ways of producing and consuming and distributing, right? And then you have great works emerging on either side of these divides. And you kind of ask, you know, well, was that work really great? Well, it's great for these guys. They think it's really great. Yeah. You know, you can imagine why Adam Smith became so popular. Right? Why Joan Loke was so popular with their theories of, of private property and, and the liberal theories which allowed the movement of capital and goods. Right? 